and Womb Trivia is presented by Bad News Media. It is October 27th, the day this is coming out. We are flying through the week uh, of football. Already off. The, my brain just went kaput. I don't know what I, where I was going with this. It's a great intro. As always, I'm your host, Nate. Mike is on the line. How are we doing today? Good, sir. I am doing fantastic. How are you? <laughs> doing great. Outside of the intro to this show, I will say I am loving this board. I was looking through this board this week. I, I've, I've, I might be a little overconfident heading into this week because I haven't had a good week yet in the NFL, but absolute fantastic in college, but I haven't been great in the NFL. I feel like this is the week I'm going to break through, but I'm going to need you to maybe potentially talk some sense into me, but I'm looking at a lot of these numbers and I'm just not seeing what Vegas is putting out here. I feel like there's some nice lines for some picking. Yeah, I, I would agree. Finally got ourselves a decent board. Um, Hope you're feeling a little more. I'm not, probably not feeling quite as confident as you. So uh, hopefully you can sway me here with some of these uh, some of these games we're looking at. I will say uh, in classic Nate fashion, last week had COVID for the college podcast. I posted the video on Sunday morning instead of Saturday morning. So <laughs> get a lot of people good who wanted to watch the video version <laughs> that came out at a nice Sunday at uh, 7.30 a.m. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh. COVID really got the better of me on that one. So that is hilarious. <laughs> oh, my, my, I thought I was going to have my Jordan flu game. I, I, I did not. That was not in the cards. Um, all right. Let's talk a little football. We're opening the week up. Patriots, Dolphins, lines at nine, over, under 47 and a half. I'm telling you right now, this is hold on to your butts games for me, folks. I do like the Patriots. I don't like to admit it. We're in a safe place, but I do like the Patriots. And here is why right now. Tell me if I'm crazy or not, but mm -hmm. lines at nine don't like big spreads. Entire left side of the Dolphins offensive line gone. Left tackle Armstead on injured reserve. You've got um, Wayne out injured reserve. Connor Williams center limited in practice. Got a groin injury. Got hurt in the last game. Waddle back injury hit or Hill got a hip. He's going to play. He'll be fine. But lots of injuries there. Pats on the other side, getting a little healthier on the offensive line. We know Bill Belichick, the one thing he does well is defensive schemes. They did a decent job the first time around. Mike McDaniels will have a counter, but I'm expecting, you know, the Pats to have another counter defensively. Not expecting them to win this game, but nine feels a little big here. I'm hoping it goes to 10, so I haven't put my money down yet. I'm hoping the public comes in here, buys the Dolphins, this number goes to 10, and then I'm going to jump. I kind of like the Patriots and it's a hold on to your butt, hold your nose, just get through a type of game. It is. I agree. Uh, but like I said, whenever we see spreads this big, you kind of got to lead more towards the underdog, especially in this season. Um, I'm with you on it. I mean, they've, they've played each other already this year. It was a relatively close game. Miami, like you said, very injured coming back to earth a little bit after last week on Sunday, kind of, kind of got their butts handed to them. Um, yeah, I, I'm with you that, that offense last week, you know, they only scored like 10 points, um, without, without the defensive touchdown. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I like, I like the Patriots here. Um, not super confident about it. Like you, it is kind of scary to think taking the, the path, but you know what? They looked good last week. Um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll take the Patriots. I do like to torture myself here. You have been on the receiving end of some quite angry Mac Jones uh, mm -hmm. texts from me this season so far. But I also like the fact Miami Dolphins defense, they play a lot of light boxes because I think Vic Vangio rightly so has identified that the secondary is a little weak right now. You know, they were hoping to have Ramsey in there. The coverage hasn't been solid. So they do play with some light boxes. That's going to allow the Patriots to kind of run the ball here, control the clock. I'm expecting kind of a, a mud game or you say just dragging the dolphins down they can't play their pretty boy offense got to get in the mud roll around tough game give me 10 if it stays at nine i'm still doing it but i'm hoping it gets to 10 on game day yeah i like it all righty eagles commanders lines at seven over under 43 and a half i don't have a side in this game how are you feeling the second go around against the eagles here this is a tough one because obviously, you know, we're coming off a bad loss, but this is kind of typical of this team where they come off bad losses and then they come out and they look good against it and like a, a surprising team where you wouldn't expect us to look good. We always play Philly well for the most part. Obviously, you could point to some stinkers we've had in the past, but for the most part, we play Philly pretty well. So, you know, I also think they are kind of in position to possibly come off, uh, you know, a bit of a letdown after last week. Um, but still, I, I think kind of in our first 
our first go around with Philly, I, I think kind of we gave them everything we had and we still didn't win. Um, I, I kind of like Philly's ability maybe to kind of come in and kick our ass. I, I think Philly wins this. And I also think, well, I'm actually more confident in, I think the over hits as well. I mean, there was 65 points between us last time we played. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like Philly, but I like the over even more. I can't – the commanders, do you know – think about this. We have a fifth-round, essentially, rookie quarterback play. We are leading the NFL in pass attempts. What, what, why are we doing that? What, what's going on? Um, I, I don't – I've not been impressed with Eric Bieniemy so far. He's had moments. But for the most part, I have been pretty underwhelmed by him. I, I just – I it blows my mind that we're leading the NFL in pass attempts. That is so crazy to me. Yeah, that is, that's a little rough, especially with that offensive line. Not, I mean, it's not terrible, but also, you know, might want to establish a little bit of a round run game here to help out your quarterback. Um, I w I haven't done a side. I do think I'll be looking at the player prop market right now. Commanders are allowing the third most yards per completion in the NFL yards gained per completion. I apologize. Um, a lot of yak off that. Um, so this is a spot where Eagles passing game should probably get hot again here. Look pretty decent. Like I said, I don't have a side on this one. Seven's a big spread, but I'm just, I'm yeah. staying away from it. Cause it's also a divisional game. You guys could get a little frisky here, but I, I feel like this is a spot where the Eagles kind of get right and continue to get right and continue to sort of build towards that team. Also, let's take a moment here. NFL GMs, stop picking up the phone when Howie Roseman calls. What is going on? The Titans especially need to stop picking up that phone. They get taken to the wood chipper more than any team ever by a GM. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. He's I, I, I'm so jealous of Roseman and all the Eagles fans. Like I, they just they have a an active GM who is constantly looking to upgrade their team, and he's always doing it. Um, but yeah, like you said. I, I'd like pretty much, I haven't even looked at the wide receiver props, but I like definitely like AJ Brown over. Um, I always, as I said before, I like Terry McLaurin against the Eagles anytime he plays them. So I would take Terry over Devonte. Devonte is kind of tough. He's kind of streaky, but all he needs is one bomb and he's over. So I, I really like, really like the AJ over like Terry over Devonte over. If you want to play with that too, I'd say it's worth it. I agree. I like where we're at there. Jacksonville, Pittsburgh line set at two and a half over under 41 and a half. Pittsburgh showed a little signs of life offensively last weekend. Are we buying that in back-to-back -back weeks or are we saying they're returning back to the mean? Matt Canada is who he is. The Jacksonville Jaguars team are looking to kind of push the envelope and, and be one of the top competitors in the AFC. What, what are we feeling with this game? This one's tough for me because it's like, do I really think Pittsburgh can be a five and two football team? I, ugh, I, I, you know, I've disrespected the Steelers for the past like three or four years. Honestly, I have. And they, they kind of always shut me up, even though, I mean, they never actually do anything. Um, this is tough. I, I just, I don't like their ability <laughs> to go, to, to go five and two. And, you know, if you have a two and a half point spread, eh, give me Jacksonville to hopefully win by a field goal. But I, I don't know. I don't like this game at all. I have bet the Jacksonville Jaguars at this point. And here's my logic behind it, folks, is where I'm kind of coming from. Yes, the Steelers got Johnson back, which I think is a huge get back in the wide receiver game. Oh, yeah. Their best route runner. He allows Pickens to kind of be on the other side and do his thing from the deep ball perspective. But the problem is the Jags actually have a good rush defense. Like This is a solid upfront unit. So I'm sort of anticipating this is a team that's wildly inefficient, the Steelers, and running the ball on early downs. They like to run the ball really heavy on early downs. Very similar to my Bucks in this manner. So you're telling me Kenny Pickett is going to be in a lot of third and unfavorables, and I'm going to take him here? No. Give me, give me the Jags in this spot. Um, I also think that the Steelers' defense is 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 looked upon a little too well. If, if they're unable to get pressure, this team sort of mm -hmm. suffers. And this is a Jags offensive line that is slowly under the radar, starting to get better and better week in and week out. You know, you've got Lawrence is a little healthier. I think this is a big game. I also think this is a big game for Christian Kirk. I think he's about to have a monster game in this underneath. So give me the Jags. I did bet them. I also like Christian Kirk's props. I just, I'm not, I think Kenny is going to be in a lot of third and unfavorables, similar to what Baker ends up in. And I just don't think they're going to be able to convert those. I know Mike Tomlin's like the king of covering when underdogs, but at two and a half, I'm not buying it at three, but two and a half, give me Jacksonville. Yeah, I like that. Rams Dallas line is at six over under 45 and a half. 
do the Rams have enough juice in the tank here to cover a six number? Or do the Cowboys kind of pour it on here on a Rams defense that is sort of returning back to the mean a little bit as the season wears on? Yeah, the Rams defense, they they really are starting to return back to kind of what we thought they would be. Um, and I don't know, Stafford, he's just having an odd, he's having an odd season. Um, it, it's been a nice little comeback season for him where I think some people were even questioning, like, can he continue playing? Um, obviously, you know, he's got some good weapons there, but just sometimes they just, they just seem to struggle in just very strange ways. Uh, you know, I can't quite put my finger on it. And then you got Dallas over there who, you know, they're just, you know, they're hot one week, they're cold another week. Um, I, I think the Rams, they have the weapons, they have the ability to move the ball enough to where they can cover here. Um, I, I just don't trust Dallas to win big. So I would go with the Rams, but I, I don't, I don't see them really having a chance at actually winning the game. You know me, I'm not taking it. T- if, if I have to back Mike McCarthy, I'm just not taking the game. All right. Like that's just not my vibe. Um, I'm not a Mike McCarthy believer. Never have. Well, I have been at one point in this season. It really bit me in the ass. Um, I'm not doing it here. Um, yeah, it's Matthew Stafford held together by bubblegum and duct tape at this point, but still kind of out there slinging it. It's a testament to Sean McVay and getting the most out of his offense for sure. The thing that concerns me here with backing the Rams is that defense, while it performed really well compared to expectations in the start of the season, and we're seeing this with the Cardinals and some other teams, as the season wears on, as you start to get those kind of, you know, nagging injuries, not anything that's going to put you on an injury report or keep you out of practice, but you're just kind of limping through the week. You get to Sunday, you're not at full health. This is kind of where these defenses start to regress a lot. I'm not willing to put my hard-earned money on this game. I don't particularly like a side Texans Panthers line set at three and a half over under 43 and a half. Both teams coming after a bye. both teams have rookie quarterbacks Panthers. Frank Wright gave up play calling duty. CJ Stroud been absolutely light in the world on fire in his rookie year. What are we anticipating here? How do you kind of see this game with both teams coming off a bye? Yeah, both come off buys here. Obviously, we've seen much more out of Houston than we haven't seen out of Carolina. This is actually one of my favorite games, especially if somehow this goes down to three. I don't think it will, but if it did, that'd be fantastic. Um, I like the Texans here. They've just shown so much more. Carolina, oh my God, it's it's just, it's been a rough go for them. Um, so give me Houston. I, I, I just, I, I like what they're doing a lot more down in Houston. I agree. I've I'm taking the Texans. I'm also thinking I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but I think an over is in play here. Reason being, we saw the pace of the offense pick up for the Panthers when Frank Wright gave away his play calling. I think that's huge for a guy like Bryce Young. He's small. The game is really fast. You can't the more time you give him back there, the more he has to like almost mess up. He he's a very cerebral player. It's read it, rip it like so a quicker offense, quicker pace you know, a week to kind of get into to work with your offensive coordinator who's now calling the game script. I think that's going to benefit the Panthers here to put up a couple more points against the Texans defense that DeMarco Ryan's been fantastic scheming things up, but it lacks some veteran talent, we'll say. Will Anderson's going to be a a dude in this league, I think. But I kind of like it over here too. But I am on the Texans as well with you. Vikings Packers, the battle of mediocrity line is set at one and a half over under 42 and a half. I feel like at this point with the Packers, it's like trying to catch a falling knife. Like where is the bottom of the market for this team? But at the same time, you got a Vikings team. That's like last year. They won a bunch of one score games this year. Those are going against them. They can't run the ball at all. It is all passing game. Justin Jefferson is probably going to be out for this game. You get Jair Alexander back for the pack. Well, I, I don't know what to do with this number right now. Do, do you grab the knife, the following <laughs> knife, or do you stay away? <laughs> I, I don't know either. The Packers, you know, they started out looking, you know, like, hey, this team could be, they could be fun. They could be competitive. We'll see. Um, but since then, ooh, it, it's gotten really ugly there in Green Bay very fast. Um and then what we just saw from Minnesota, you know, on Monday night, which I think that shocked, you know, a lot of us. Um, like you said, they weren't, they've been struggling to run the ball, but somehow they were able to run it against San Francisco. I don't know what that was all about. Um, Justin Jefferson, yeah, he's not playing. So, I mean, that's going to be huge. Um, but I, I still, I, I never really like teams going to Green Bay and feeling real confident about them being able to win and cover. But I, I feel 
pretty good about the Vikings. I don't know if I'm going to bet on this game just because it's it's a terrible game. Um, so I'll probably stay away. But I'd probably lean lean Kirk and the Vikings over there. I don't disagree. I don't know. I, I know there's a lot of people calling this sort of the bottom of the barrel for the, the Packers. Like this is sort of their, if you think of it, the stock market, this is buying them low or at their lowest point. I don't know if it is yet. Matt LaFleur is, it, when they hired him, it was a little head scratching. It felt like they were reaching for a young guy like just trying to get a young offensive minded guy because we had seen this kind of slew of young offensive coordinators getting hired they didn't want to be left out you had Aaron Rodgers kind of I think masking some of the deficiencies but you pop on the game film I mean the passing game is kind of a disaster the spacing is this disaster I saw a play where two wide receivers lined up maybe less than five yards apart ran the exact same route <laughs> Like, what are we doing? I, I just I like it. It's just it. It's a bit of a disorganized mess. It feels like at times. And Jordan Love hasn't been great, but there there's not a lot of places to go with the ball, unfortunately. And with Aaron Jones right. out, that's been a struggle. I, I haven't made a play. I, I, I'd probably prefer to be with the Vikings on this side. But man, it's I don't know if we've officially seen the bottom yet of the Packers market. So I'm I'm sort of waiting and seeing. This feels like a good barometer to be like. All right, how bad can it get in Green Bay? Or have we kind of seen the low point on this team and we're setting a, a, a base? Yeah. Talk about two teams who had low points. The Battle of New York, Jets, Giants. Line is at two and a half over under 36 and a half. Oh man. I just here's a question for you. Are the Giants better with Tyrod Taylor than with their $160 million man in Daniel Jones? I think that's what his contract is. <laughs> Something like that, 140, 160. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I don't know. How you... I think so too. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think so. Tyron just he's a much better decision maker. He also, I mean, he's not someone who's gonna go in there unless he's playing Washington. He's not gonna really throw for 300 yards, but what he will do is he's gonna give his wide receivers a chance. He will throw, you know, he'll throw them a deep ball where you know they, you know. They can come down with it, or it's going to, you know, most likely be incomplete. Daniel Jones wasn't really doing that. He wasn't he like just throwing a ball up for his wide receiver to come down with. Tyrod has done that in the two games that we've seen him so far. You know, he's he's willing to, you know, let it fly a little bit, stretch stretch the defense, stretch out the offense. Um, so yeah, I, I think that Tyrod is probably playing better right now, um, but they still are struggling to score points with Tyrod in there. Um, and I think this New York defense is just going to eat them alive. Um, and the New York Jets defense, sorry, they're both New York. Um, the Jets defense is going to eat them alive. Um, so I will take the Jets to cover, not with a lot of confidence though. I'm not going to lie, but I, I think they're just, their defense is too good. I'm with you. I I'm, I bet the Jets in this game, they're coming off the bye, didn't play last week. That's extra time for this defense to prep for this Giants offense that just cannot do a lot. There's just not a lot of weapons there right now. And then the other part of this is Zach Wilson has shown, look, he's not going to be an elite quarterback, but he's serviceable as long as you kind of keep things simple and don't require him to do a whole lot. You've got an extra week of kind of working that game script. The kind of what they're going to be looking to achieve from an offense standpoint. Defense is going to keep them in this game. I'm with you. I took the Jets. I don't like backing them as a favorite, but I did I did place a wager on them this week. This next game, I would rather stick glass in my eyes than watch these two quarterbacks do battle. And that is the Falcons and Titans. Will Levis is coming into this game. You got Desmond Ritter who, oh man, that is... That's a rough showing down there. Arthur Smith also, his press conferences, what a just a whiner. Um, the line is set at three over under 35. Just a terrible game. Yeah, Arthur Smith's a terrible coach. He, watching him on the sideline is so funny. Um, <laughs> however, I mean, even though this is like a battle, like he's a battle with just such terrible quarterbacks. This is a game I actually feel pretty one of my more confident games, which is hilarious because it's so terrible. But I, I do feel pretty good about the Falcons' ability to cover this game. Uh, the Titans are terrible. In the last four games, they have a total of 38 points. Uh, I mean, what are we doing here? That, it, that's so bad. And now you're going to bring in Will Levis, which I understand why they're not starting Malik Willis, because that guy has no pocket presence. <laughs> I told you that one. Would have saved you a lot of money had you hired the Nate Cook consulting firm on draft night. <laughs> Whoa, he does not know what's going on. So 
I would start Levis, Levis as well. I don't think he's going to play well. Um, I'll take the under. I'm obviously concerned about the Falcons' ability to, to score enough points to cover three. Um, <laughs> that's a big-time concern of mine. But I feel pretty confident that they could do it. They could win this game, you know, 16-6, to six, something like that. I would take the Falcons, and if you want to play the total, take the under because they're not going to score any points. Nope, this is going to be an ugly, ugly game, um, to say the least. I mean, the Falcons moved the ball on the Bucks left and right, but turnovers. I mean, that fumble that same thing against Washington. Yeah, it's just they cannot hold on to the football. Um, yeah, I I haven't made a wager in this game, but it, that's just, oof, yeah. Uh, Saints Colts lines at one over under forty four. Colts showed they can be a little frisky against that Browns defense. The Browns defense did a solid job last week, but let up some big explosives. Gardner Minshew's doing his thing. He's gardnering out there. Um, where are we at with this situation? Because it's it almost feels like the Saints are in a real danger spot for quitting because things are going quite poorly and frustratingly from an offensive standpoint. You have the Chris Olave news in the in the news this week for some not so great speeding issues um where are you at with this game uh this is an odd this is a strange game because it, it's it's kind of like where i think the saints you look at their team you look at their roster you're like hmm, they're the better team but they can't score any points um <laughs> and india showed they can score points i mean in the last five games they've scored at least 20 points a game so i mean i'll take that uh minshu the thing that worries about me minshu obviously turnovers uh that's where i'm really concerned and, you know, it is against a pretty good Saints defense. Um, but still, I, I worry about the Saints' ability to score points. So I'll I'll take the Colts here. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Um, yeah, the Saints struggle to just be a functioning offense at this point in time, um, to say the least. And, and the Colts, they hang around. They, they, they can break off some big explosives. I like it as well. Brown Seahawks, lines at four, over under 38 and a half. Man, did I wish I had better faith in Walker because this game is screaming Browns to me. You've got a Seahawks team that defensively is actually playing better than expected. Great young secondary. Witherspoon is that dude in the secondary. Yeah. But the offense is what scares me here. The Browns love to play man. The one thing we know is Geno has struggled on that kind of bump and run man when he doesn't, he's not able to get the ball out quick. Browns control the line of scrimmage here. It's just the Walker effect. He is not a good quarterback. Right. I want to pull the trigger at four. Should I do it? Where what are you thinking for this game? I don't think I'm going to be much help, honestly. I have like I I I cannot figure this game out either. It's it's one of those games where like I feel like Seattle kind of they're kind of a team that struggles against, you know, those that that that, you know, kind of NFC North or AFC North kind of like boring football team. But they're like good. That's kind of a team Seattle struggles with. It's teams that Gino kind of struggles with. He struggled against the Bengals. They're kind of, you know, AFC North team that just kind of. So I I, I lean Browns, but it's it's kind of for 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 silly reasons. (laughs) Yeah, I just oh man, I want to have some. You know what? Screw it. I'm going Browns plus four at four. I'm taking them at four. All right, we're we're locking that in because I just I think the defense is going to give the Seahawks a little. T- I I don't love the undersized corners here for the Browns, especially against a guy like DK. But like, you can roll coverage over him. They're going to control the line of scrimmage here. I, I like I like the Browns in this spot. Chiefs Broncos lines at seven over under forty seven and a half. We know the Chiefs have struggled when spreads get above the three range. It's at seven. They are known for playing with their food a little bit here, but this is a Broncos team getting a tad bit better defensively, but that's not saying much. They were on pace to have the historically worst defense in the NFL history, I believe, at one point this season. So, like, the bar is pretty low. What are we doing here? Are you doing anything? What do you kind of see with this game? It's a tough one. Obviously, these teams, like, literally just played, and we saw, like, probably the worst game ever it was like i think it was a thursday night game so that explains a lot of it um but like you said the broncos are getting a tad bit better but you know the last game you know, the chiefs finally are i mean they're a six and one team but i mean that sounds funny saying this but they're finally starting to look pretty good um yeah. they are starting to kind of roll a little bit here um they are, as I had said, either last week or the week before, they're, they're listening to me and they're getting Rasheed Rice involved. I think that is huge. I, I like the way he plays. Um, I like I like just the way that they, they make use of Pacheco. Travis Kelsey, 
it's crazy. I, I'm just like, there, he is wide open and there's no one within a five yard radius of him. I, what are defenses doing? It, 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 it blows my mind how easily he gets open. I take Chiefs here. I don't really like a spread that big. And, you know, I do worry just because, you know, they did kind of struggle against this team already this year. But I, I, I think I think they'll be able to take it. Yeah, it, I think it was Dan Orlowski I saw this week has the theory that Kelsey doesn't actually run routes. He just finds the open space and him and Mahomes are somehow on the same page every time, which is pretty impressive to think about if that is the case. I, I'm a little nervous betting the Chiefs here because I talk about this all the time in college. We see less of it in the NFL, but in college, you often see coaches in games where they're playing down, either hide things offensively and not kind of open the playbook because they've got big games coming up, or they like identify an area that their team's really weak at, and they use that game as sort of a glorified practice to work on those things. Andy Reid is the master at that. And I look at the schedule, and he's got Dolphins-Eagles coming up against a Broncos team that they can just beat. And so I do worry about him using this game as a game to kind of hold some things back offensively and maybe work on some areas that they are weak offensively and defensively. And that's why a seven number sort of scares me because he's the the champion at that. It's one of the reasons he's one of the best offensive minds in the league. Um, So I haven't done anything here because I cannot, I cannot bet on the Broncos. I refuse to do it (laughs) unless it's like begging me to do it. And at seven, it's not, if this was like 10, I'd be like, screw it. We're betting the Broncos this week. But at seven, no, maybe if you had a hook in there, you, you get a hook, you entice me a little bit. You know, buy me dinner first. All right. Before screwing me here, Broncos, Um, give me that hook. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go on that front. Let's talk a little Ravens Cardinals. And thank you, Ravens, for finally getting with the program, a team that I was having the hardest time figuring out because I came into the season and told everybody like, oh, this offense is going to be humming. Like this is going back to like. Lamar Jackson at Louisville type of themes. Like they're going to spread things out. It's going to utilize the offense. Great. I love Todd Munkin. They were struggling left and right. And then I was like, all right, Mm -hmm. I'm picking my spot. I called my shot like Babe Ruth out here for the Lions game. I said, if they can't get it right, hit the panic button. They got it right in a big way. Now they've got the Cardinals line is at nine and a half over under 44 and a half. Can they continue that before you might start to think to fade this team because they get a little too high or, are you calling it early and saying they're returning a little bit back to the mean? The Cardinals have a shot to cover nine and a half. Where are you kind of at with this game? It's a big spread, obviously. Big spreads always have me nervous. But, um, you know, the, the Cardinals and their friskiness has has actually kind of kind of gone away. Uh, they're, yes, not, they're not. Yeah, they're not too frisky anymore. They just suck. Um, <laughs> no. I'm going to go Ravens here. They've been rolling a little bit here. This will be their third straight dub if they're able to get a win here. Um, and just things are going, they're just going real bad in Arizona. They, they, they have no one on offense. Absolutely. No one. Yep. I agree. This is the problem with these guys like Dobbs, you know, they have these nice peaks, but then once you start to get some tape on them, you start to understand their, their kind of, you know, habits and tendencies. You can start to pick it up. This is a really, really good Ravens defense. That's coming to town. The offense is finally humming. They're healthy. Todd Munkin, I think, has finally started to got into a rhythm of how this offense can really kind of operate at a high speed. I like the Ravens in this spot. I'm not overthinking this one. I'm not looking yet to fade the Ravens. I think there's going to be a point here if they really kind of lay it on again where maybe we start to look to fade them because they get a little too high. But I, I like them in this spot. Bengals 49ers. This line has been moving a little bit. It's at four. It's come down based on Brock Purdy entering concussion protocol it's now moved back to about four spot over under 43 and a half we have yet to see a player enter concussion protocol on tuesday or later and play the same week that's sort of giving you an indication that he's probably not going to be ready to go which means we're getting mr six cents himself i see ghosts out there sam darnold mono boy coming into the league (laughs) again here debo's a little banged up trent's in some injury problems depth is really getting tested here, which we didn't think they had a lot of the 49ers. What are you making of this game? I do have a pick in this one, but I kind of want to hear your thoughts uh, on this one first. This, this is a tough one. I think in, you know, obviously my, you know, the biggest concern on the Bengals end of the side of the ball, especially on offense is, you know, protecting Joe, making sure, you know, Joe has a clean pocket, you know, cause I know he's mobile, but right now he's not maybe as mobile as we've seen him in the past. Uh, but as far as, you know, the wide receivers for Cincinnati against that San Fran secondary. I love that matchup for Cincinnati. Um, 
So yeah, I, I lean Bengals a little bit here. Obviously said Brock Purdy, it doesn't really look like he's playing. Um, he was a limited practice. He was limited in practice. I don't know how you're limited with a concussion. That's the strangest yeah. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I, I don't really know what that means, but okay. Um, and it's just, things just haven't been going so well for the 49ers recently. I, I don't think, you know, their seasons, you know, I think they're still playoff team, Super Bowl contender. I, I really do. Um, but just right now, I, I, I kind I like the matchups here a little bit better for Cincinnati. And also, I don't, I don't really know what's going on with Nick Bosa. Um, he was, a, I mean, he still is a monster, but in these past two seasons, he was a, like a, a killer on the field. And right now he's just, it's, it's just not coming together for him. So that's something to you know, keep an eye on. Yeah. It's never a reassuring sign when Kyle Shanahan is reportedly sitting in on defensive meetings. Not, not good. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that yeah. right now. <laughs> not good at all. No, um, I'm with you. I love the matchups here, but, Here's my thing. It's like, if it's not this week, when's it going to happen for the Bengals? Because I look into their numbers and things are concerning at the level. So right now, we've talked about this a lot, but Joe Burrow, he's 32nd in intended air yards at 6.1. That has been a pretty significant decrease since their Super Bowl season, where he was sitting at 11th at 8.1. Last year was at 6.8. It's been another decrease. The most shocking thing, though, and I understand he's been injured, but you have all these weapons. They are dead last in completed air yards per completion 3.6 that's disgusting um you you go back to the super bowl year they were eighth at 6.3 last year 5.6 so it's been this steady decrease from the super bowl years it's like at what point if it's not this week we're really outside of ward san francisco is not great in the back end you've got all these right. weapons when are you going to open up? You got to open it up here. You got the Bills the following week. That's a that's a matchup I love. I can't wait to see that number the week of. I, I want to see everybody get through healthy, but I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities there for the Bengals. Not to get too far ahead of it, but it's like, when's this going to happen? Because Joe Nixon's efficiency is falling off a cliff from a running game perspective. You're not opening it up when you've got Joe Burrow in this stable of weapons in the passing game. Like Something is really wrong if you can't come off the bye this week and let it rip. And so I do think they're going to let it rip. You've also got a defense letting up the least amount of yak in the league right now for the Bengals. Total yak yards. You got a 49ers team that relies a lot on yak. It's That's what they scheme it up to be. So I, I really like the matchups here. I'm taking the Bengals at four because it's like, this is where I'm, I'm calling my shot. If it's not this week, you got to take that panic button out and smash it, Cincinnati, because you got to be competitive here. I'm not saying you got to win outright, but you got to be competitive here. Agreed. Yep. Bears chargers lines at eight and a half over under 46 and a half. Tyson Bajan coming out swinging in his first game. Now he gets a chargers team that it, this is a must win and must dominate win. I think for Brandon Staley in this matchup, I don't know exactly what the plan was last week. You come out and you run a soft ass zone in the first half and the chiefs eat you up. You go switch to man. You have some more success. Got to do that again in this game because Tyson Bajan and this Bears offense was successful last week because the Raiders play a soft-ass zone. They let everything underneath. He was able to dink and dunk it his way down the field. Does have a little bit of Tyler Heineke in him from a confidence standpoint is the vibe I was sort of picking up a little bit. Not the same arm, but a little confident. What do you make, though, of an eight-and-a-half number for this Chargers team? <laughs> I mean... We, we put a lot of faith in these chargers and they, they really, <laughs> they really let us down a lot. And you're, you're asking me here to put eight and a half points of faith in them. I can't do it. I cannot do it. Uh, I just can't. I, I don't like Chicago very much as a team, but still I, I can't do that. Um, kind of surprised. This is a Sunday night game. Also surprised about the Monday night game, which we'll get to very soon. Um, it's like but, uh, in the worst way. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what is going on here. I'm like, why is this? Why are these two games being played in prime time? But um, yeah, I'll 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 take the Bears. Just not that I really like them, but I I cannot trust these Chargers team anymore. I cannot. They 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 like you said, they better win this game. <laughs> they need to not only win this game, but in my opinion, they got to win it pretty dominantly. And the defense has to show up. I mean, they've invested the fourth most in cap space the last three years in this defense, and it has underperformed greatly and you have a defensive minded coach like I, I honestly if they can't dominate this game i think it's i just wonder how much longer can you give the brandon staley experiment you've got kellen moore and sure the, the offense isn't humming like you sort of wanted it to be when you got kellen moore in the building but 
you got to evaluate the young talent in your offensive coordinator here because you don't want to be sorry, the commanders who, you know, have these young offensive coordinators and let them go and then they succeed elsewhere. It's a very similar thing here. Like if Brandon Staley's not going to work out, which it does, there's nothing that shows that it's working out. It's regressed. <laughs> um, right. I think at some point you got to be like, let's at least evaluate what we have in the building at OC so that we can feel confident passing or giving him the torch. Cause you got guys like Ben Johnson out in the wing in Detroit and other coordinators out there that you got to get going here with, with what you have in, in, in LA. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a big, big game for them. Um, Lions Raiders lines at eight over under 46 and a half. Uh, the Sunday night, Monday night game are definitely in teaser territory, but what are we doing here? What, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I have no idea. I mean, at least like the Sunday night game, I could, you know, coming into the season, he's had his moments, but coming into the season, I mean, you know, Justin Fields was riding high, so I can kind of understand what they were doing there. I don't know what they were doing at all with this Monday night game. <laughs> <laughs> I got no explanation for why this is the matchup that we're watching on Monday night. I mean, we, we like watching the Lions, I think, for the most part. Um, yeah. No one likes watching the Raiders. I, I do not enjoy watching this team, <laughs> watching just the terrible coaching decisions. Maybe I like laughing at their sideline. Maybe that's fun. But this is just... This is a bad game. Um, I do like it as, you know, a Lions bounce back game. It's at home. Jared Goff at home compared to Jared Goff away is just, it's night and day. It is just, he is a totally different quarterback when he's playing at home. So give me the Lions here. I think it's a good, good, good moment for them to bounce back. Like you said, the Raiders give up everything. Amon Ra's just going to eat them alive. Uh, it, it's, yeah. And, yeah. This is, in my opinion, this, this should not be a very close game. This is a game where the Lions offense should eat because the Raiders give everything underneath. The The Lions use one of the highest rates of play action. You're going to get those safeties biting downhill and Jamison Williams over the top. And like, they're just, this should be a spot where they really eat. It's why I like to attack the Sunday, Monday night game. I, I put it into the teaser and just tease it down yeah. through the three. Um, so it's, it's sort of teaser bet central. I, we don't see this as often in the NFL. We we see it a lot in college, but are the Raiders kind of on quit watch, like quitting on their coach? Like the vibes coming out of Las Vegas are not great and they are professional. So you don't usually see a team just flat out quit like you do in college because they are getting paid large monies, but they, there is some, everybody's human. It feels like the Raiders are dangerously on quit watch. It is kind of weird how teams kind of like, you'll, you'll notice teams kind of are, in that mode and and like even a week ago this was a three and three team playing against chicago that could have easily gone on to four and three but even then i was just like this team doesn't give a shit like Devonte adams doesn't want to play there no one wants to play there everyone hates their coach like it is it is strange that how that can happen so quickly when their season's not even over yet um but yeah i, I would absolutely say they are on a quit watch for sure i think they very much are i was watching that bears game and i was like Oh man, this does not look like a team that wants to be out there right now. And they definitely don't have a coach they want to play for. Cause like just look across the sidelines. When things were going bad for the Lions, that team still played because they want to play for Dan Campbell. Oh yeah. This is not the case in Raiders land. Not at all. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. That'll do it for that week. Any uh final closing thoughts on this one? Nothing major, just kind of funny. I'm picking, you know, my my favorite games are like just terrible terrible games with terrible teams but i i feel really good about atlanta and i feel really good about houston that's fair i don't i i like all those i'm with you they're on my card as well so i don't how are you feeling about the rumors that uh your boy montez sweat and chase young and the defensive line might just be ripped apart here in uh washington i forgot to ask i mean i don't i don't hate the idea obviously you know chase is on the last deal of his last year of his rookie deal montez is on his fifth year option there's no way we're going to keep both of them um I would lean now if you asked me before the season, this wouldn't be it, but Chase has come back and he looks pretty good. Um, I would lean keeping Chase. He obviously the ceiling higher with Chase than it is with Montez. Um, so if you know, if we can move Montez on and see, this is what always drives me crazy is we we never have good trades, but Bradley Chubb was just traded for a first round pick. And I already know we're not getting that first <laughs> or a second for Montez, and that's gonna 
drive me nuts. <laughs> As it but, should. <laughs> yeah, it's going to drive me crazy. I mean, Ron's going to orchestrate some stupid trade. Hopefully hopefully Josh Harris is, you know, he's going to hop in and say, look, Ron, you're, you're gone in two months, bud. Let me take over here. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a rare moment where I hope there's some ownership meddling um, and we, you know, we at least demand uh what what we deserve from montez which in my opinion could be you know a late second something like that but i don't think that's going to happen but um if i had to choose between the two i would say we gotta we gotta move on from montez i don't hate it i don't hate it all right that i got nothing else that'll do it for this week and as always peace (laughs) 